Hello and welcome on the front. My name is Matt and on today's episode we're going to be exploring the World War I battlefield of Hartmanns Villerkopf. So come with me and let's explore the battlefield. also known as Van Aumont, renamed by the French after the war in the region of Alsace, southern France. The summit stands at an imposing 556 metres and was strategically important for both the French and the Germans to control the Alsace valleys below. To my right, we have the French positions. To my left, the Germans. And as I currently stand, there are no more than 20 metres apart. This somewhat forgotten battlefield saw some of the deadliest and bloodiest fighting of the entire First World War. Now, I say somewhat forgotten because when we think about the battlefields of France during the First World War, we think um, of the Somme, Verdun, um, Bevel's Britain, Vimy Ridge, battles further north, uh, and often forget that the uh, Western Front stretched all the way from the shores of uh, northern Belgium, 750 kilometres to kilometre zero, marker 111 on the Swiss, French and German borders. So let's have a look at the memorial that is here at Hartmanns Villerkopf. The Hartmanns Villerkopf Memorial is unique in that it was the first battlefield to receive um, historic, uh, historical monument status in 1921. The memorial as we see it here today was officially inaugurated in 1932. The monument was designed to be a pilgrimage uh, built by the donations of the French people uh, to remember the sacrifice and victory of the French nation. When guests first arrive at the site, they walk through an open-cut trench that we see here, leading to the crypt behind me, which contains the remains of 12,000 unknown French soldiers, as well as photographs and materials recovered from the battlefield itself. Once you go to the top of the monument, you see the altar of the fatherland, which can, is engraved with the states and cities that helped to donate to build the monument we see here, before opening up to an open cemetery containing the uh, graves of 1,640 soldiers. The battlefield at Hartmanns Villerkopf raged from 1914 to the conclusion of the war in 1918, and the battlefield here is remarkably preserved. So come with me and let's see what remains of the battlefield. Fighting in Alsace was unlike any other during the First World War. Firstly, it was mountainous, and it is not the flat, muddy plains that we are accustomed to seeing in the northern battlefields of France. Secondly, and more importantly, were the reasons why both sides were fighting. For the Germans, it was a matter of defending the national territory of Alsace. For the French, it was about reclaiming the lost provinces. The French had ceded the regions of Alsace and Lorraine uh, during their defeat to the Prussian Empire in the Franco-Prussian Wars in 1871, and it was seen as a national humiliation that festered in the minds of the French public and military alike, one that needed to be rectified should the French ever go to war with the Prussians again. As such, um, the uh, opening offensive of Alsace and the Battle of Mulhouse made up the initial offensive of the French armies during the Battle of the Frontiers during the First World War. The opening battle for Hartmanns Villerkopf begins in thick snow on the 30th of December 1914, and the French managed to push the Germans off the summit, capturing the peak on the 3rd of January 1915. The next day, though, the Germans counterattack and fierce fighting uh, is met with minimal gains from both sides. Renewed attacks by the German division Fuchs from the 17th to the 21st of January managed to push the French off the summit. French counterattacks are repulsed and the Germans begin to dig in.
in March, French reinforcements arrived and a renewed attack uh, opened up on the 17th of March. Uh, every inch of, of territory was fought for tooth and nail. And it wasn't until the 26th, following a huge artillery preparation, that the French were finally able to restore their positions on Hartmann's Villakopf in a matter of only 10 minutes and taking some 400 German prisoners. Um, for the remainder of the year, the lines would then be uh, limited to local skirmishers as the German chief of staff ordered that all German offensive operations in Alsace be ceased as they focused their attentions further north. As such, the lines here only changed minimally. 25th of April, the Germans managed to push the French from their positions, but the next day, the French recaptured it. In October, the Germans implemented for the very first time here the use of flamethrowers, uh, pushing the French out, but again the next day, the French were able to retake their positions. Uh, the last major offensive would not occur until the 21st of December, 1915. The French attempted to consolidate their positions on Hartmann's Villa Kopf in a much broader offensive to capture the town of Malouz. Uh, launched on the 21st of December, the initial attack saw great success and they were able to push the Germans off the summit. The next day though, the German reinforcements had finally arrived and uh, in a counter-attack almost annihilated the French forces that were stationed here. The French suffered uh, almost 2,000 casualties, 1,500 troops uh, were captured, and by the 8th uh, of January, the Germans had completely retaken the summit, uh, and all French uh, gains from the offensive had been lost. For the rest of the war, the lines would remain relatively stable, with both sides only exchanging artillery fire. Um, ultimately, neither the French nor the Germans made any real successful gains here, at least not enough to justify the thousands dead on both sides. Ultimately, the armistice of, uh, signed on no November 11th, 1918, would see the conclusion of the First World War and the eventual withdrawal of all German troops from the region of Alsace on the 17th of November. 1918. I'm now at the end of the hiking path that has been set up to take you through the battlefield. It uh, goes for about 4.5 kilometers long. Uh, it's very well marked, uh, but 
uh, you will get lost in there. There's plenty of paths to go off and explore and it's absolutely uh, fantastic. If I'm honest, I have no idea how I'm gonna be able to fit in all the footage uh, that I have taken here. Um, if you do decide to come here, I would uh, recommend wearing uh, pants as there is a lot of poison ivy and my legs have been stung quite considerably. Uh, also bring a flashlight as a lot of the trenches and the bunkers in here are very, very dark and the lighting on my phone was too poor to really light up and film a lot of what was in there, unfortunately. From here, what I'm going to do is uh, go have a look at the museum uh, which has been set up here. It's actually a jointly funded museum by the French and German governments, one of the, uh, I think the only one actually where the German and the French government uh, do this in, in First World War Museum. So let's go and have a look at that museum. Come on me. So unfortunately the museum is closed. One quick look at my watch and I've realized that I've spent all day here uh, and it's absolutely no wonder. The battlefield here is enormous and it will take you hours uh, to go through and explore. This has to be one of the best preserved battlefields I think I have ever seen and I've explored many battlefields not only in France but Germany uh, and Belgium as well um, and the battlefield here is um, just it's awe-inspiring. I don't really know how else really quite to put it. Uh, and it is truly worth taking the time to come down here and visiting this as it is a truly humbling experience. Uh, and it's on that note that I'll actually end this video. Uh, let me know your thoughts of um, Hartmann's Villa Kopf in those comments down below. Uh, and if you would like me to cover more um, battles of the First World War as well. Uh, if you like this video, remember to hit that like button. And of course, if you uh, would like to see more videos or content from me, remember to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time on the front.